Okay, so we're taking a look at 2018, question 5b, part 2. And it says, after the collision, the speed of P is twice the speed of Q, find the value of alpha. So in part 1, we found the speed of Q, uh, P and Q. And now they tell us P is uh, twice the speed of Q. So just to put that in simple terms, just we can mathematically write that. So P should equal 2 times... Q. So just using what we had previously, we're going to say the square root of all this stuff, I'm just going to, for the moment, I'm just going to put this for a moment, okay? Just, I'm not going to write out this long one. I'll just say the square root of all that stuff in P, which is this stuff here, okay, is going to equal 2 times the square root of all this stuff in Q, which I'll just say is blah, this stuff here, okay? Now, just why am I doing this? Because I'm just going to square both sides straight away. Because I want to get rid of those square roots. So, if we square both sides, just be careful of this. We're squaring this side, okay? And we're squaring this whole thing. So, what this will give us is the square root and the squared will cancel. That's terrible maths, by the way, but we won't argue with that. And don't forget that this 2 will also be squared. So, we'll end up getting the following. We'll get everything inside the, back, the bracket there for p, so 2 over 5 u cosine alpha to be squared plus 4u sine alpha to be squared equals 4 times, that's 2 squared, that's where I got the 4 from, 7 over 5 u cosine alpha to be squared plus minus sine, sorry, watch myself there, and honestly, I'll always make mistakes when I'm doing this because I'm moving too fast. Just slow down. Make sure you're uh, writing it down correctly. Okay, cool. Now that we've got there, we just have to solve both sides. So you probably do this yourself, but uh, have a go yourself and then have a look through to see if you can work out what I did or if I made a mistake, which will probably happen. But if I'm squaring everything here, I get 4 over 25. U squared cosine squared alpha plus 16u squared sine squared alpha equals 4 times 7 over 5 becomes 49 over 25, square at the top and the bottom, u squared cosine squared alpha, and minus and minus makes this a plus, so we get u squared sine squared alpha. Um, the left-hand side is going to pretty much stay the same. On the right here, I'm just going to do, you know what, I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to divide, actually, I'm going to show this here. I'm going to divide this side by 4 to cancel that 4. And if I do it there, I have to do it here and here. So what we end up getting is some quite nice cancelling here. Obviously, you can multiply the 4 out as well. It would be totally fine. But I'm going to do that just because I saw it and it was kind of quicker. So this becomes 1 over 25. Oops. So this becomes 1 over 25 u squared cosine squared alpha plus 4 u squared sine squared alpha equals all this stuff over here. Now, if you're quicker than me, which you probably are and hopefully are, you might have spotted a few things already are going to start disappearing. Um, what is in every term here? There is a u squared. So we can just cross through all these squareds. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 25. Don't forget if I multiply, I need to multiply each term by 25. So that's 25 across the board. Uh, what will happen is these will cancel. These will cancel. And I end up getting cosine squared alpha plus 100 sine squared alpha equals 49 cosine squared alpha plus 25 sine squared alpha. Now we're just going to bring everything uh, to one side and you should hopefully see that we've got cosses and sines here. Now it doesn't look like it's going to factorize nicely but we can remember that um, uh, it, your rules from your log tables so if you've got your log tables you should be able to check uh, sine over cos gives you uh, tan.
So what we're going to get is the following. So I, what I'll do is I'll get the sines on the left, I'll get the cos on the right just for the moment. So I'm going to say 75 sine squared theta equals 48 cosine squared alpha. Uh, I'm going to divide both sides by uh, cosine squared. Now, you obviously can move a lot faster than me. Um, actually, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do it a step at a time. And what we're going to get is 75 sine squared alpha equals, sorry, over cosine squared alpha equals 48. Then we're going to say divide both sides by 75. Again, I'm doing this very slowly just because people often get confused in the maths here of what's happening exactly. And we get sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha is 48 over 75. Um, 48 over 75 simplifies down. I think it goes 3 into both, so it becomes uh, 16 over 25. And sine square, or well, sine over cos is just tan. We can say tan, oopsie, tan squared alpha. Do you know what? That doesn't even look like the word tan. <laughs> tan squared alpha. There we go. So then we're going to say square root both sides. Just showing you what I'm thinking. You don't need to put this stuff in yellow, but it's just to help you kind of understand what's going on. Uh, you're going to end up just getting tan alpha here. And the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5. So we get tan alpha equals 4 over 5. Take the tan inverse of that. So alpha equals the tan inverse of 4 over 5. And bada bing, bada boom, we should get alpha to be something like 38.66 degrees. That's it. If you've done part 1 correctly, that was a very nice, generous part 2. Just make sure... At the very start, you get your equation right. Read it slowly. Often people put the 2p equals q and things like that. And then just work through uh, the maths. That's it.